Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Let's Play Star Trek Online, the only Star Trek MMO that is here and on my screen and that we are playing with people and things. <laughs> so, um, in our last episode, we uh, performed, performed, we played the episode called Cold Comfort. And we learned where Tran came from and why we're able to have a Breen officer on our ship. That was a lot of fun. I'm seeing a lot of Odyssey class starships. That's kind of cool. Alright, um, so the question has been brought up, do I, what ship am I going to go with when I get to level 50? Which, as you can see, see this little white stuff right here? All it has to do is get to the end, and boom, I'm, uh level 50. So what ship will I fly? Well, we'll talk about that more when I get there. Uh, actually, we'll talk about it more. Yeah, I guess when I get there. I guess I'll go ahead and change ships. I was thinking of just sticking with this ship through um, all the missions, but when I hit 50 after I finish the Breen stuff, might as well go ahead and change over. I'll do it for the rest of the episodes. Um, so we'll talk about it then. The question is brought up, do I have the Odyssey? I think I do. I probably do. I might have gotten it for free when it was being offered for free. I think Ensign Ricky was around then, and I believe I took advantage of that time period and got the ship. But it's not as good as the Sea Store version, which is really like a plus one ship. It has a unique console in the Sea Store version. And there's three different types. There's a tactical, a science, and an engineering kind of uh, odyssey. So there's three different odysseys, actually, in the Sea Store. So, um, and they're probably better than the free one. But they all have that slow turn rate. And I don't think it's the best in-game ship at all, period. <laughs> but we'll talk about that more later. Alright, so, Breen stuff. Yay! Cold Case. This is the next to the last episode of the Breen. So with this uh, episode and the next one, then we'll definitely be up to 50. Race the Breen in a hunt for information that stretches across the Aurelia Sector Block. This is probably one of my most favorite episodes in this entire game simply because it's a classic Star Trek exploration mission you have something to find you have to race another alien race to find it and it's like it's like information it's like exploration it's totally what Star Trek is all about all in this one episode so, I really like this episode. It's an episode of Discovery. And, um, yeah, let's start it. You'll see. I like it a lot. Cold Case. All right. Here's Ambassador Sura. You must return to Defera immediately. The Breen are searching for preserver technology, and they have once again targeted the ruins near our city. I fear that more of my people will die, and with each death, the balance shifts. These attacks need to stop. We are depending on you. Stop the Breen and keep the secrets of the Preserver safe from their treachery. And we get something called a Biothermal Dampener or a, the Super Cooled Combat Impulse Engine. We'll talk more about those rewards at the end of this mission. So let's race to Defera. Got to hurry back and get there and stop the Breen from uh, messing with the Deferi once again. Green, Deferi, Deferi need our help. This is a common theme throughout this whole um, <laughs> featured episode series here. The Breen invasion is the Deferi need our help. It's funny because um, I had some uh, friends who uh, we used to play the uh, dailies, the Breen dailies, over and over and over, a million times over and over. And it's funny because one of the dailies is um, rescue to ferry captives and it was funny because uh, colonists that plus um, emancipation 
and aiding the Teferi, all of them, basically all of the dailies, which are now available as you can see, um, were about the Teferi being captured or needing our help. And there's this, there's, there was one of them where basically um, they're captured by the Breen and you have to negotiate for uh, their transfer to your ship and the Breen refuse, and so you have to trick the Breen and beam the Deferi on board your ship and then either fight the Breen or get out of there. And um, we would play that, you know, every day. And so it was a running joke, you know, the Deferi need our help. Every single day they get into the same situation. They're the same group of people get captured. They always need help. Every single day you have to rescue them. So it became a running joke among amongst us, and it was funny for a long time. And we would uh, go rescue the Deferi. Of course, back then you got emblems, and emblems led to cool Mark Eleven, very rare gear. Now you don't get that. You either get dilithium or you just get skill points. So it's kind of pointless. Well, I guess the dilithium was good, but you don't get a lot of dilithium. You really have to do a lot. All right, so here we are at the ferry. All right, let's begin cold case. The Fera, I mean the planet. Captain, long-range scans confirm the Deferi ambassador's suspicions. It appears that there's uh, there is a portion of the star chart hidden in the ruins. It, see, how do we just know that? It appears that there is a portion of the star chart hidden in the ruins on the planet's surface. Something is interfering with the scans, though. So we can't pinpoint the location from here, and a way team might be able to do surface scans. Yeah, I don't just know that there's a star chart down there. I don't know, but, and how did we not know it before? Now we all of a sudden know it. That's a little weird, but anyway. Gotta beam down and um, find out uh, what's going on here about this star chart star chart that leads to the preserver archive apparently it's a race to find it beam down and we get our whole away team and this mission is cool because it doesn't focus on just one area it's gonna have us flying all over the sector block which I like a lot all right investigate the ruins of course we've been here before and we fought a group of deferi or I mean Breen but we never really examined this area. Now apparently we know that the ruins um, have a uh, star map fragment that we have to find. Sir, I've just received updated data from the ship's computer. Apparently this site closely resembles a preserver site in the Beacon system. The indigenous people there were able to access the site by performing a ritual. Records indicate that three people arranged themselves atop plinths forming arrows to point east, then south, then southeast. That's all the data I have. So that's the information. This is a puzzle. And that's our information. There's no Breen to fight right now. The Breen come afterwards. So right now is the puzzle part. You don't have to worry about Breen beaming down on you. You just have to figure out the puzzle. And the puzzle is, as you would guess, on top of this platform. Now, um, when you walk over these things, you'll see they light up. Each one. And then there's a middle one. Okay. When you do that, these squ certain squares also light up. Okay. Now it says to, perf to create an arrow in those certain directions. Okay. The way you do that is with your bridge officers. You can direct where your bridge officers go. We've never really used this feature, but... Um, if I go to my Borg and I do set a rally point, I can tell her to move to this platform. And she'll do that, and she'll stay there until I tell her otherwise. Um, now it says to create an arrow, but here's the fastest way to do it, okay? You don't have to do that. Fastest way is to take all your bridge officers and put them on... I barely just got them in there. See if I can get them a little closer. 
I guess he's in there enough, but whatever. Okay. Put all your bridge officers on each corner, okay, and make them all light up. And you go here. Okay, now you will see that they're all lit up. As that happens, you have this thing called activate panels, okay? There's a certain order to activating them that will solve the puzzle. The first thing you should do is stand right in the middle. And when you do that, every panel is lit up. So you have all the options, okay? Um, now, I used to have this memorized, but it was like the third one or fourth one down is the first one you do. Okay, it must be the fourth one. Fourth one down. Yeah, that worked. Said it worked, Captain. Okay, so that's the first thing you do. That solves the first part of the puzzle. Then I, you back off that thing, okay? And then this should be the second part of it. Uh, or not. Or actually... You can still stay on it and... Um, there we go, okay, this is the very bottom one. Next. And then back off, and then it should be this one. No. Must be wrong about that. It's been a long time since I've done it. It's one of these. It's not that one, maybe it's this one. Yeah, that's it, okay. So just back up further and then choose the bottom one. So basically, that's it. You've solved the puzzle. So that's how you can do it really quickly. Put everybody on a spot, stand in the middle, do the fourth one down, and then do the bottom one, and then back all the way up and do the very bottom one again. And uh, that solves the puzzle in like five seconds. You can do it really fast once you've uh, memorized that order. And there you go. A lot of people spend a lot of time on this puzzle trying to figure it out, but it's that easy. Once you learn the pattern, it's just that easy. All right, now we can scan the star map. Awesome, Captain, ship sensors are reporting multiple anomalous contacts. It may be green ships at long range, beam up. Okay, so we got part of the fragment. Now, we gotta take out some Breen. Yeah, Breen, they're after that fragment. They can't have it. last of them, sir. Though, with all this debris, I don't trust the sensors. I'll be happier once we're out of this area and back into open space. So I'm going to wait for the red alert to go away. It says the computer has completed its analysis of the star chart, and there is an encoder, encoded marker indicating that the Xinghua system is a significant location. So now we have to run to the Xinghua system. So it's kind of like racing to each place before the breed get there. Okay, and that's way up at the very top, so it's going to take us a little while to get there. See, I don't yet, I don't think I yet have Slipstream. I get Slipstream at level 50, so... Quantum slipstream. Yes. 
too bad I don't have it. Quantum torpedoes. No quantum slipstream, so. Once we get to level 50, we'll have that ability. That'll be so much better. Until then, we're just doing a lowly transwarp 10. So yeah, this is like a, a race around the uh, sector block, going to each little planet and picking up star fragments that will lead us to the Preserver Archive. So that's a fun mission, I like it. The, uh, the Breen are pretty tough. You know, the, they're tough in their own way. Uh, the Borg, the Borg you can push away from you and you can get away from some of their attacks. Um, the Breen, their cryo attacks, they have a very large area of uh, impact and it's hard to get away from them and they do a lot of damage, especially if you're standing in the cold spot. So, the Breen, they can be pretty tough. I like them as an adversary. And you got to wonder what they look like underneath their helmets. Continue. Preserve for posterity. Alright, now we're in the Shingha system looking for another star fragment. I love, love, love this area of space. Captain, I am detecting a gaseous anomaly on the far side of the planet. Uh, must have been those burritos I had earlier. Sorry about that. The line of navigational beacons should lead us uh, straight to it. So this is cool. This planet, you see, it looks like it's sideways, but obviously we're in space, right? So, I mean, it's us who are sideways or whatever. You know, it's space, so you can be in any orientation you want. But the way that we are in this system here is that the rings of the planet are going around, you know, vertically, and it looks like you know we should like rotate around but we don't have to we can stay in this orientation because it's space we can do anything so I love this system just for that image of you know being in a three-dimensional space it's really really awesome you don't see this a lot in Star Trek they always keep the ship on the same plane as the planet to, and make it look like it's you know they always have north at the top and south uh, pole of the planet at the bottom. Whereas here, it looks like the north pole is on the left side and the south pole is over here on the uh, bottom of the planet to the right. And they've never show they don't show those kind of orientations much in this show, but they need to more because this is reality. You know, when we, when we fly into a solar system one day in real ships from Earth, you know, we're going to be flying in weird orientations to the planet. We're not, you know, north is not going to be at the top and south is not going to be at the bottom. It's going to be all in some weird direction like this. And we're going to fly into the system like this. And it's going to look strange and alien to us. And I love that. Alright, sample unknown gas. Um, we've transported a sample of the gas to a containment chamber, but there is no record of anything with this molecular structure on record. It might be a synthetic, synthetic compound or the byproduct of some sort of as yet unknown stellar phenomenon. Our science staff is now working on a complete analysis. I've got something, Captain. The preservers were known to encode data in the world around them. So I superimpose the molecular structure of the gas sample onto the orbital pattern of this system. It's a map, and it's pointing to something beneath the surface of that small moon. Which is awesome. So, um, this is not the moon. That's an asteroid up there. That's the moon over there. So that's where we need to head. And I like that idea of encoding information into things like that. And then overlaying them on a star system and seeing a pattern or a map emerge that kind of stuff is kind of cool so here we are flying over the planet on its horizon basically and we're inside the rings here is an unidentified moon
This is incredible. The interior of the moon is hollow and it contains a vast geological orrery that charts the heliocentric motions of everything in the system. The orrery suggests that there should be two large asteroids in this area, but I'm only reading one. Perhaps they collided in the millennia since this structure was created. I am, however, reading an energy source on the remaining asteroid, but it's buried deep in the rubble on the surface. If there was a collision, it is logical to assume that the rubble is all that remains of the second asteroid. We will need to remove the rubble to get a better recording of the energy source. So this moon is an artificially created structure that's hollow on the inside, and it records the movements of bodies in the solar system. It's kind of like a big computer, I guess. That is um, way far ahead of us technology. I just love it. And then flying up here along these rings like this toward this asteroid. This is just so beautiful. You cannot beat this. One of the best scenes in the game, I think. All right, so some asteroid rubble. Take care of it. something. A star map. Astonishing. Who knows how long this trail of breadcrumbs has, has been here just waiting to be discovered. We should scan the char chart, chart, scan the star chart and add it to our existing fragment. Okay, scan. Awesome. The computer has synthesized a new star chart from our two fragmentary scans. Preliminary analysis indicates that whoever created these charts placed great significance on an L-class planet in the Manic system. All right, so now we got to go to the Manic system. Pretty awesome. And that would be down here, middle of the uh, sector block, sort of. Now well, toward the bottom. Alright, on our way to the Manic System, so we found two fragments. They're leading us to this place, so this is interesting. I doubt it'll be our last stop. But this whole thing is coming together quite interestingly. We're following a map that the preservers left to find their archive, I guess. Star Trek is not the only series that has uh, the idea that aliens in the past seeded life in the galaxy. Um, Stargate also has that same theme that the um, beings known as the ancients who came before humans uh, from another galaxy uh, landed on Earth, lived there for a long, long, long time and built stargates throughout the galaxy and built machines like the one found on um, oh I want to it starts with a D it's like Dara or it's not the fair it's um Dakara Dakara is the name of that world and uh, the uh, device was a seeding machine that could create life in the galaxy and the ancients actually created humanoid-like life forms in the galaxy. And it explains uh, why there's humanoid life forms in the galaxy. And um, then, of course, it also explains us and uh, all that. So it's uh, not unique to Star Trek, but uh, Star Trek does share that theme that there was an alien race in the past that seeded life in the galaxy. And that's why we all look the same, or at least humanoid. Now, there are alien races that develop without the help of the preservers, 
or the uh, Ancients and Stargate, and those races look way different. Like, I would say the Tholians, for example, would not have been created by the Preservers. So the Tholians, you know, are just, like, totally alien to us. Really alien. And there are other races like that out there. Lots of them, actually. Well, in this show. Who knows in real life? <laughs> but in this show. Captain, I'm detecting a Breen squadron dead ahead, but they're moving away from us at full impulse. They must already have what they came for, or else they would be engaging us directly. The Breen aren't afraid of a fight. We can't let them get away with a piece of the star chart. All right, oh, we got to stop them. Warning. Ship is under attack. They have our star chart. We have to find it. I love flying through those explosions. <laughs> See, a cruiser can totally take it. Couldn't do that in an escort. <laughs> but a cruiser, it loves flying into explosions. Alright, analyze wreckage. Sir, we have intercepted a transmission from one of the Breen ships. The message was unsecured. They uh, must not have had time to encrypt it. The message contains a fragment of the star chart. They must have retrieved it from the planet below before we arrived. For all we know, Breen ships could already be en route to the archive. I will begin analysis to determine our next location. Star char chart analysis complete, Captain, and we're uh, headed to Rava 2. I just hope the Breen don't get there before we do. We need all the pieces of the chart to find what the preservers were hiding. Alright, let's head to Rava 2. And Rava 2 is back up here where we were in the last episode where we had to save the, uh, the fairy frigate that was that uh, cold blue planet. And it looks like we're headed right back to it. Yep. So how do y'all like this uh, Breen series? I think it's one of my favorite. You know, it was the first featured episode series they came out with for the game. And um, I think they just really did a good job with it. A good mix of ground combat, good mix of space combat, and a good mix of exploration. You cannot leave out the exploration in Star Trek. If you do, it's just not Star Trek. I think a lot of the newer featured episodes, they left some of that kind of stuff out. And, and uh, they, what they did is they substituted it with more puzzles. And uh, more complicated puzzles. And I think those kind of puzzles kind of take away from the game. I think they make it a little more unaccessible for some people. Uh, that's just my opinion. But I would like to see more exploration stuff and a little less, you know all about the puzzles. All right, continue. Race to Rava. Stuff like this where we're figuring stuff out and how to put it all together and what it all means. Really cool. All right, beam down to the dig sites. All right, so we got to go down to this cold-looking planet. Captain, take a look at these scans. The frozen rock face near the center of the crate shows signs of a hollow interior. Okay, well, there's multiple green. Let's take them out. Enemy I don't know why I just hit that button. I hit the absolute wrong button at the wrong time. to 
take out. First one was that group. The second one I'll take out is this one. The place where I want to end up is down there where those green are. So let's take these out first. Enemy Now that those two are taken out, we will take this group out. Destroy cave wall. It may not look like much, but you can click on this and destroy it. So if you get confused of what to do, this is the cave, even though it doesn't look like a cave. And uh, you can actually target it and fire on it. And when you do, it reveals an opening. And inside is some preserver technology. Activate console. There's the star chart. Oh crap. There's Breen. Oh, it's a big one. Now this, this is thought par. Set yourself up a bunker. This gets tough. Before you accept him, trust me, set up all your gear. You're gonna need it. Thought par. I'd like to personally thank you for finding the final star chart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, he's just saying, I'm going to get it. I will kill you. Oh, see, look, there's one of those cryo weapons. To all that damage. He killed my brain. Did a lot of damage to me and my Jepidar. kill him. My Anar popped her double. I had to pop my two doubles from the um, Shard of Possibilities. Um, it took all that to bring him down. And it killed my Breen. Stuck him inside a wall, apparently. Alright, now we can scan the star chart. We beat those Breen. Scan star chart. Assemble star chart. And there is a complete star chart based on what we just found. Scanning and transmission are complete. I believe we can find the preserver archive with the information we have. And with luck, we'll get there before the Breen do. Standing by to beam up. Report to Ambassador Sura. You didn't think we were going to find the archive in this episode, did you? No, that's saved for the very last episode. So this is cold case now complete. A biothermal thermal dampener. Okay, that is bind on pickup. Unique max one. Um, unfortunately, it is not a weapon. It's more like a griefing device. <laughs> um, in the past, when this first came out, uh, people could take this biothermal dampener and throw it at people in Earth space dock or anywhere and it would freeze them in a block of ice and you could not move. This is anybody in the game. Unfortunately, it doesn't work against enemies. Well, it became such a huge griefing device that they turned the ability for it to turn others into ice kind of off and reduced the effects of it 
because the effects of it were like this huge ice flow coming out like fog and ice and stuff and it was uh, pretty intense on performance so they dumbed it down so when you throw it at somebody it doesn't do anything to them totally um, totally I don't know for a lot of people they were like yay thank you and for others they were like but it was fun throwing it at people but that was something we had fun doing so, you know, I don't know. But it is what it is now. So it is not a useful item. It's just a nothing item. You cannot use it in combat. Not a combat item. Alright, but uh, the other thing you can get is the super cool combat engine. Of course, this goes along with the Breen uh, ship set. If you're going to run the uh, engine and the deflector and the shield for all of the bonuses, uh, you'll want to get this. And of course, once we hit level 50, it will be Mark 11 and not Mark 10. But um, I'll just pick up the dumb biothermal dampener because the uh, ship set is useless to me at this point of the game. Okay, we are not level 50 yet. It, it brought us to here, but not all the way. So perhaps the last mission will cold storage. But we will do that in the next episode. It is not quite time for that yet. Go ahead and put my skill point there. And uh, so that's it. We are up to the last episode of the Breen with um, cold storage. And we will do that in the next episode. So I hope you all enjoyed Cold Case. Thank you very much for watching.